close your eyes and focus on your breath. Watch the breath all the way in, all the way out. And as for any other thoughts, just let them go. Let them go. You don't have to follow them. Follow the breath instead. Make the breath your path. We're following the breath because the mind needs a place to settle down. If it doesn't have a home like this to settle down, it has to wander out exposed to the sun and the rain and all sorts of problems, like a child without any home. Gets, gets run over by cars, gets kidnapped by strangers. All kinds of things can happen to a child, but that doesn't have a home. In the same way with the mind, it gets run over by anger, it gets run over, taken away by lust. It doesn't have a safe place to stay, and so it's exposed to all these defilements. So you bring it into the breath. Stay with the concentration. The mind has a sense of well-being with the breath. Try to adjust the breath so it feels good. Not too long, not too short. Just ask yourself, what kind of breathing would feel really good for the body right now, all the way down through the whole body? And see how the body responds. Give the body some time to breathe fully so it can get the energy flowing all the way around. And the mind will have a much better place to stay. That way it's happier to stay in the house. You don't have to lock the doors. It's like a child in a room. You've got lots of toys to play with. You've got loving parents. Okay, you're going to stay around the house a lot more than the child where there's no, thing, no sense of ease, no sense of well-being in the house. So try to create this sense of well-being right here. Because when the mind has this sense of well-being, it's a lot easier for it to think about doing good things, saying the right thing, thinking the right thing. All too often we just act on our feelings and our emotions. There's a sense of discomfort inside, and so we let it come out in our thoughts and our words and our deeds. Of course, that doesn't solve any problem at all, and that creates more problems. So what you want to do is create a sense of well-being here, so that when you think about doing something that's going to be unskillful, you remind yourself, why do you want to do that? It doesn't cause any happiness. You've got some happiness, you've got some pleasure right here. Do you want to destroy that? Try to keep these thoughts in mind and create this sense of well-being inside, so that the mind has a home. When the mind has a home, okay, then it's a lot more reliable. Again, like homeless people. Homeless people can get into all sorts of trouble because they don't have anything to lose. But when you've got a good home like this, you realize that, that unskillful behavior is going to give you a lot to lose. You're going to lose a lot of what you've already got. So try to create a sense of well-being inside. This is what they mean when they talk about the word merit. It's a word we don't like to use too much in Western Buddhism, but it's an important part of the practice. It's a sense of well-being that comes from doing things right and doing good things, going, doing things that are harmless. And if you don't have a sense of this kind of well-being inside, it's hard to do the right thing. But as you get a greater and greater sense of well-being inside, it gets a lot easier. You benefit, the people around you benefit. This is why meditation is not a selfish activity. It's something that everybody should be doing every day for the sake of our own individual happiness and for the sake of the happiness of our society at large. Everybody benefits the more people meditate. 